What's going on everyone? So welcome to my page, Pittsburgh Pets. Behind me I have a tank of some guppies and bristlenose plecos. And today's video's topic is gonna to be on breeding and selling these two fish. So let's look closer at them and get to it. Let's start with this tank up here. I have a 40 gallon breeder of red delta guppies. And I actually think I'm gonna be doing a highlight video on this tank, because I went from having very few of this fish one male, a few females, uh, almost losing this drain entirely, uh, at least without having to go out and buy more, to having hundreds of them. So I can explain how I did that and the best way to do it. But as you can see, I have a lot of um, adult males and a lot of pregnant females and just tons of fry. So I think I'm gonna be taking all the fry out of here or catching the adults, moving them to a new tank and letting the fry grow out. But here's one example of using my acrylic yarns I've seen from other people. I've seen, I initially learned this from an aquarium co-op. So he showed how to give hiding places for guppies, how to build these um, years ago now, uh, at least a year, maybe longer. And they grow beneficial bacteria. Um, food can get down there, the adults don't get to, and the fry can feed on. Um, gives hiding places for the fry, grows that bacteria like I said, and I've actually coordinated, since I kept buying it, um, multiple rolls, I actually bought different colors. So here you can see I got the reds with the reds, and that's just me kind of trying to be organized even though it's very hard to keep everything in line in the fish room at times, but I think it kind of adds to it. But you can see there's lots of fry in here. They're getting just flake food twice a day. I'll add some baby brine shrimp. Um, let's get to a better example of a tank with guppies and plecos and how it's thriving. So down here is one of like my floor tanks, kind of hard to get to. Um, but as you can see, there's a lot of baby guppies and there goes a pleco right there, nice male. And there's plecos breeding here as well. Um, this tank I'm trying to update because it's working very well, so I haven't wanted to touch it. But right now I have no breeders in this tank. I've pulled the breeders. Any of the adults in this tank or fry have grown out and they're ready to be separated because the strain I was breeding, um, they dropped a lot of fry. There's still some nice males. That one there is very nice. Nice, uh, fancy guppy. Very cool actually. That is the first time I've got a close look at him. So I've been working on uh, I'll jump around a little bit in this video, cover different topics, but I want to kind of stick to the topic of breeding guppies and bristlenose plecos together. So both these fish are relatively easy to breed in the hobby comparably, but there's certain tricks that can help you. And I think doing them together is a very beneficial, I guess an ecosystem, because you can feed the guppies heavier. Um, any food that gets left over will go to the plecos and all that food getting eaten and spitting out and uh, broken into smaller bits becomes a food source for the fry and the, the pleco babies. So as you can see for breeding the plecos, I use a flower pot. This is one of the main ways. You can see the male hanging out. He might be fanning some babies right now because he has a baby on the flower pot. And if you guys keep watching, uh, the quality gets better. This is one of my dirtier tanks because I have not only lots of plecos, but lots of large plecos in this tank. Um, if you guys are getting into breeding plecos, uh, go ahead and email me. I have a lot of breeders for sale right now and babies to grow out. Uh, so, but getting back to the flower pot, I have the base of the pot on top and I flip the pot upside down and then I simply just kind of chip a hole in the side. Um, you could get a drill bit, or I just like to get a uh, Phillips head screwdriver, push it through or kind of hammer it through, and it'll make a small hole, and then you can get pliers and kind of just pinch it and take off chunks till it's the size you want. And I'll actually take that screwdriver, and I'll just put it inside, and I'll just go in circles, and that kind of sands it for me. So you can make a Pleco cave for around $3 in around three minutes. It's pretty easy to do. I think I tried doing a video on it once, but it was... It's hard to do something like that without having a uh, camera holder or a stand. I'm just doing uh, footage off my phone until I um, 
have a need to go upgrade and kind of get a camera, which don't get me wrong, I've thought about it. You can see those guppies are trying to breathe. They're obviously mature. The male doing that, the, that dance there and turning sideways, uh, that's kind of how he draws the female in. But so this tank gets algae wafers and flake food daily. And I think that's very important to breed uh, these two fish together. Um, they both need that by themselves. The plecos need the algae wafers and driftwood. The guppies need the flake food and sometimes baby brine shrimp. Uh, that helps them grow faster, but I think it also helps the parents not eat the fry because that food can get everywhere and everyone's gonna be full. So the babies can eat it, grow faster, so there's a shorter time period where they can be preyed on by the larger ones. And then the adults aren't as hungry because they're grazing on live food. That's a lot slower than the babies, so beneficial for everybody. Uh, I'm gonna keep talking about this topic, but as I go, as I continue, I'll jump from tank to tank. This is a good tank, so I'm breeding, I call these a purple delta guppy. I would really appreciate if someone told me what these would be called, but I've bred them for maybe three or four generations and their color gets lighter and darker and it's the way I want it to be, but it's really hard to put a name on it. I'm not gonna tell someone it's a certain strain of guppy and not be positive of it, but I like to think they're kind of my own slow creation. This one is really cool. He has like a leopard in the end of his top fin and his back fin. But all of these fish range from a, uh, and he has a little bit of color in his side fins. But all of these fish range from a light blue to like a dark purple, or I've had like, it's maybe like 2%, but it'll almost be a black. Um, I've had maybe like six adult, almost like dark purple or black delta guppies come out of these. But that's out of hundreds. So you can see their color, they're very consistent in their body shape. And overall color I would like to say is pretty consistent but I don't have I have a goal in mind for this fish of what I want to look like and if something is a good looking fish I'm not gonna not breed it so I'm fine with having a uh, slight variety of color in a certain strain long as I don't find any flaws in that fish so these are one of my favorites they're one of my best sellers um, they always come out with really nice tails. The females in this strain, people always tell me they love it. The females get huge. Like look how big that female is and she's not even that old. So they get really large females. They drop very large uh, amounts of fry when they do have babies. So I really like this fish. And I am breeding these with a grow out group of plecos. And ironically enough, I think these plecos have bred on accident in this tank. So I put a spawn of maybe 30 plecos in here because the plecos eating their algae wafers gives a food source for the guppies as well. And then they clean up after the guppies. So you don't really necessarily have to be breeding the plecos to make it beneficial for the guppies too. So you can be just growing the plecos and breeding the guppies in the same tank and it's still a beneficial relationship in my opinion. So I have a lot of nice plecos in here that have gotten a good size by feeding them one or two algae wafers morning and night. And then the guppies aren't feeding on their fry because there's not much hiding place in here at all. And they've been breeding like crazy and I've sold from this tank and I've pulled fry. So they're breeding really well without many hiding places because these fish are never starving. They're always getting their morning and night feeds but they're also feeding on those pleco wafers during the day and throughout the day. So I think that makes the parents less likely to feed on their fry, which just goes to show that the fish are beneficial to each other, but if you feed them correctly, food is a very big factor in this um, coexisting. This tank here has more of those uh, purple deltas is what I'm calling them. And that's what you can expect when you have a mature male. And that's not uncommon. So that's one of my, these are some of my nicer ones. I uh, just recently redid this tank and I caught everything out and I left, I think it was two males and maybe five or six females. See, there's a female down at the bottom. 
So some of these females have much bigger tails. Most of that just because they're older and they're growing longer. Uh, and I'm breeding these in here with some plecos, like like I said. Here's a nice long fin baby pleco. He's actually feeding off the snail. I don't know if he's got some algae on his snail. It's kind of a funny shot. First time I've caught that in the act. But down here, these uh, adults are much larger, so I provide, they weren't breeding, so I gave them a larger flower pot. And I know people say they want to be in tight quarters, and I have had them breed in the typical pleco caves, but I think these work great, because all they have to do is get the female into the cave, the small hole, and then they have a lot of space to move around in there, and uh, continue to breed with different females and have their space. And you can see this flower pot's covered with uh, Pleco babies. It's very cool because they're throwing common blacks, albinos, and long fins. So, very cool Pleco uh, breeding pair there, or like a colony. Here's a pretty cool tank. So, this is a little bit of a project with my Plecos. So, I had, I have, which I'm going to show next, super red bristlenose Plecos finally breeding. Uh, I've always wanted to breed the Super Reds, but I never could find them available, um, or at least for a good price. Anytime I would find them, they'd be like $30, and they'd be like an inch long, and I just, I didn't have the investment. I could have done, but I wasn't willing to invest a few hundred dollars to buy eight or ten babies at $30 a piece, and I didn't find them um, at an online source. And I wasn't doing stuff online with shipping and uh, selling and buying at this moment. But I found them locally. I got eight of them for around $10 a piece. I got a really good deal. Uh, I think I traded with them or I got them from a store the day of that someone brought them in locally. So I think I traded my baby Plecos. I gave them like 30 comments for 10 reds, something like that. So it worked out really well for me. And there goes one of the reds. I end up having like six males and two females. So I finally got them to a, a appropriate breeding size and I have two different tanks um, of the super red pairs. And then the leftover, five or what did I have, four left, three left. I put them in here with a combination of females. So here's a really nice long finned female. I have some mature adult albinos that are females. And these guys are bred. This is actually a pleco cave. So I just tossed that in there. Let's see if I can get focus for us. This is actually a cool shot if it'll focus. So I have that cave in there. But they bred and they actually kicked the eggs out. So I end up catching the eggs out and hatching them myself, which is another reason I like the flower pots. When they breed in there, those eggs fall to the bottom of it, the male will still fan them and they're not gonna get kicked out and eaten by other plecos that did not spawn. So this is a cool, I'm gonna see what I get out of it. I actually have some fry I'll show us. And they're not yet colored up, so it's hard to tell what they'll be. But I'm excited to get some maybe calicos, some calico long fins. Uh, even if it's 10% of them, I'm really excited to get that going. I know I have one or two calicos that are older in a different tank from different parents. But I'm super excited to have different variety of bristlenose plecos. Uh, I've started selling fish online. I actually have a website I'm working on. It's in the early stages, but I have fish posted for sale and I have contact information. I'll put a link to that right now. Or I'll uh, at least give you the, the .com, like the website link. So you guys can go ahead and check that out. I'll go show you the babies, which are right next to it. There we go. So these are the eggs I had shot from that group. And you can see they're already eating on uh, algae wafers. There's probably a good 50 to 100 in here. They're, I mean, they're covering the whole bottom. Uh, I Actually, I want a clip. I took a video of these guys and I wanted to make a video, but it was too short to be a full video. Let me toss that in right here.
so you can see that was all of them when they still had their egg sacs on them and they were uh, just becoming free swimming. So I actually left that container in the tank for a few days to let them swim out freely. And I introduce a lot of food. So every morning and night, I look at, this is important too with feeding plecos. You wanna feed these algae wafers, but by the time the next feeding, if it's still there, leave it, but don't feed any more. So you wanna wait till that food's completely consumed before you start adding food, because that'll just overload the plecos. Um, but if you're feeding it and then it's not there at all, you can keep up, upping that amount until it's gone by the next feeding. So here I fed these this morning. Um, actually, I may have fed, I fed them, the smaller ones were from this morning, and that big piece was from maybe a few hours ago. So they're good for the night. There's a small chunk back there they're feeding on. But if say, let's go for an example. I'll go over here and show you tank. I know I said I showed you super reds. I'll, I'll, I'll still get to them. Here's a tank I've done a video on in the past. It's my 29 gallon breeding for profit plecos. So these are, I've been selling these online and I have a good supply of them. So I'm gonna continue to do that. Uh, they're posted on the website. These are mostly commons and albinos. Uh, I've gotten a few very oddball fish out of this tank with a black spot on them. I've showed those as well. But most of these are commons and albinos. You can see they're feeding down here on some algae wafers. This is a very hard shot to get because it's such a hard glare. But there's got to be 200 or so one inch plus plecos and there's not it's not like little tiny plecos i mean they're still having babies but there's a whole lot of plecos in this tank i give them three algae wafers in the morning and i give them three at night but if i come back and i was doing one or two for a while and i'm like they can definitely handle more so i put four in one time in the morning expecting there to be some left and it was all gone so that's a good example if i could put one in there the next day i'll put two the next day put three the next day put four Maybe one day you put five or six in there and they don't finish them. Then you know, okay, let's go back to four wafers or say you're breaking them into quarters. Let's just put three quarters instead of a full one. So that's a good example of finding out what your fish need to feed on and how much they can really consume. And these, just because these out, are some of those fish that came from that tank. So that pleco on that log there, I. I've yet to have anyone tell me differently, but I think that's a very rare bristlenose pleco. I've never seen anything like that. So they have the black spot on them. It does not fade over time. Um, here is the first one I ever found. So I'm super excited to breed these. This guy is finally getting almost mature enough to breed. Uh, might be a female. We don't. I don't know yet because it's still young. But I am very excited to grow these plecos out and breed them and sell them to stores and online. Um, I don't even know what they're going to be worth it because I think it's something new. So I'm not going to lie, they're not going to be cheap, but I'm very excited to breed these and see what their babies look like because I have five or six of them now that have an odd spot on them and it's in all different places. It's not a sickness. So I, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I think I might have something special here. So things pay off if you're observant and selectively breeding and just really working hard on something. There's another guy in the back there, so you can see uh, one covered it. And that one that doesn't have anything on it, that's one of the siblings. Guy has very small spawn that produced him. Maybe only eight babies. I think it was like 20 babies, but half were commons, half were albinos. And he was one of them that had the black spot. So I kept him and five or six uh, siblings that had the nicest yellow of the albinos. I don't really like that bright white albino. I like kind of the yellowish, um, more color to him. But actually, this is awesome. She's got a she's got a spot on her fin. I didn't even know that. Very cool. That's even more proof that I can actually go through their fins. That's discovering things as we go. Surprised I haven't noticed that yet. But I was trying to get that one behind them. But that's really cool. That I can actually be in their fins. It's not even on their scales. So that's even proving more to me that this is actually a color mutation that who knows this could be albinos you could bring this into super reds really anything the greens so i'm i'm beyond excited about this uh this breeding project of uh breeding for profit person those plecos 
angelfish just want to get in the way. I sell those too, but these are just some standards. They're nice. They're, they're nice angelfish. Very healthy, eat very well. But that one's cool. I like it's the black and white. There's one here that's a little bit smaller. It's, real, it's got the black and white. There she is. That one's going to be cool as an adult, I think. I think a lot of people get too crazy in the angelfish and they have so many colorations. But they're not as, not always, but I don't think they're as hardy. So I think angelfish, like especially in the 70s and 80s, they were just known for like, you could have a hundred in a 10 gallon tank, do a water change once a week and they, you couldn't kill them if you tried. Now you have these very inbred fish that you look at them funny and they stop eating. So not these guys. I, li I like a fish that's healthy and that comes first. If they have cool colors, that's a plus. If you have fish with cool colors, but they don't live, what's the point? Other than that ranting, let's go over and look at the super reds. Here I have some fancy guppies with a breeding pair of super red plecas that just bred this week. Um, it was on nine, I believe it was, sorry, I was trying to read the tank. So it's over here. I added them on 925 and I spotted babies for the first time on 1017. So that was maybe 10 days ago or so, a week ago. And I can see one now, so I'll get them on camera back there. And when I put some more food in here, they'll typically come over in this area where there's uh, no plants because I want to put the food where it can get to the bottom. And they'll go swarm on that a little bit. The parents might be hard to see. They're probably in the flower pot. I haven't seen them for a few days. Um, but a good example of breeding for profit with the guppies. So in here I have actually a grow out group of guppies. I have a pair of fancy guppies. And here's one of the babies growing out. That's not a breeder yet. Obviously they will breed whenever they're of age and they are pretty much there. But I'm working on like a cobra, very colorful guppy for ever since I've had guppies. So two or three years of uh, selectively breeding. I've not bought any of these guppies in two years of this type. The red deltas, the purples, things like that. Um, I've bought those more previous but still maybe six months. These fish all originated from a pet store, so they weren't anything fancy when I got them. A lot of the females, let's see, at best look like that. But now I'm getting a lot more of this top and bottom coloration. And these aren't my best ones. It's just one of my groups growing out. But their mother has a lot more color than them. And the male has a lot more squared off tail in these. So that's what I've been working towards. I've been really getting my females to look nice, but the males over time started getting kind of crooked tails. Um, good body shape, but their finage would be all raggedy. So I'm getting back to getting that delta tail on them. I have a video on crossbreeding. So I'm actually, for the first time, introducing a new strain of guppy into these. But I mean, I think this male, I mean, is very underrated fish. In person, it's, I can't catch it on this camera. But if you look close to this side and the scales, I think that's one of the best things that you can do with guppies or the best thing you can have. Uh, the super reds and the purples sell the best, but I think these fish are way cooler. I love that rainbow pattern on, he really doesn't want to settle down for me. But I think that rainbow pattern on their scales on the side is one of the coolest things. That's what got me into guppies at a young age. and I've gotten back to breeding fish and keeping them and that's always been the fish I enjoy the most. I'd way rather look at these fish than like those big huge tail one color fish but I, I, I like them all so getting back to the topic though I had a male and female in here have babies I let them breed and then I meant to move them but I didn't have the tank space at the time so once that tank freed up they already bred one more time. Obviously the female's pregnant, so the male wasn't really doing much at that point, but they had a second drop of babies. So there's two different groups of babies from that same pair. And now the parents are breeding above, I can show those. But this is a great situation where I can feed algae wafers to this tank every day. All these babies have a constant food source. The guppies don't prefer to feed off the bottom, but they absolutely will. 
They'll go down there, they'll pick at that food. The plecos have a food source. The larger plecos break up the bigger pieces of food so the guppies can feed on it. And then both of these uh, fish love all this hiding place. This has some moss growing and there's acrylic yarn. So whenever the female had her babies, I didn't see them for maybe the third day. Sometimes you'll see them within the first eight hours or so if they're just currently having them or you catch them early enough, they'll kind of school in the top or the left or right. But once the parents chase them once or twice, um, they'll dart into those plants. You won't see them for a while. So this is a great setup and same with the plecos. When those parents have them, they'll push them around when there's food. But whenever they're eating that food, some will break off, get pushed into the plants and the parents will go after it. And that's when those baby plecos will feed on that. So that's how it's so beneficial where you can get away with feeding the larger amounts of food because you can't feed, let's simplify, you can't feed three guppies and two plecos, the breeders, a certain amount of food to last all day and it still get eaten, um, at least efficiently in my opinion. I can't put an eighth of an algae wafer in here for those fish. It might be enough food, but it's not enough surface area, I think, that they can feed off of it. And I just, I haven't had as much success doing that. So whenever I'm doing that for a hundred fish where they've bred, they're growing, they have the babies that have the appetite, um, they're all gonna feed on that constantly. The food gets spread out and it kind of makes that feeding frenzy versus two fish that kind of want to breed, they want to get away from each other. When you have all of these babies, it really splits up all that aggression and then it adds to the amount of food you can give that tank and there's not as much of a uh, dramatic too much too little food you can get away with a lot more this is the tank i'm really enjoying right now so this is that uh super red bristle nose pear that's breeding uh you can see these are much older i had someone ask me if i'm selling these yet and they're just about that size especially it's one of the front of the glass where i can start selling these guys online and you can see they've had a second generation of babies so there's the newest ones at the bottom and then up on the glass these are the first ones and I'm probably going to hold back a good dozen of these for grow outs and breeding. Um, I just really like super reds and I'm not risking losing them. So I want to get plenty of these to a decent size before I start selling any, but I can, I can definitely sell some of them because I have enough right now. But these guys are doing really well. They're using that flower pot idea I had from before. And there's a perfect picture of the two side by side. And then, like I said, breeding them together, I got my pair of red delta guppies in here. And this is exactly what that tank I showed before looked like before I had all the fry. I was feeding plecos heavy so they would breed until the babies could grow. And I have a pair of fish in there that they can feed off the pleco food and also their, weight, their flake food on the surface until they have their fry. Their fry normally have no problem because they go down to the bottom where there's all this food already there for the plecos and then they can just grow up without being eaten. You can remove the parents, grow them out and just keep starting that over and over again. This is the fancy guppy pair I just talked about. I'll show that they had fry for a third time. They've been hiding nonstop for a week or two but this is the first time I caught them out of their plants um, another thing I like to use, I've just started using recently, is these fake plants that are, you can put on the bottom of the tanks and weigh them down, or you can float them upside down. Makes great hiding places for the fry. They may hang out in there, and then the mops, that also helps add top and bottom coverage. But here's that pair, you can see that's a nice looking male with a good squared off tail. Uh, the female has a lot of color, good body size, I know they're hiding from us. But her top fin's a little bit longer than normal. She's got good color. And I've got females that are starting to pass her up and look even better. But she's producing a lot of fry. She's doing well. I think these babies are gonna look nice. And I could sell six packs of these fry and things like that and potential trios and breeding pairs uh, down the road. And I think people are really gonna love these fish and get a very good range of babies out of them. Show off the babies a little bit. They're getting big, slowly and surely. They got fat bellies. And the other thing is, tanks missing is some plecos. 
it's starting to get algae on the glass and I could probably feed these guys more. But the top tanks, I don't like to add too many plecos because if you ever add a bunch and then you can't see them, say you lose one unfortunately, then the tank can really take a turn for the worse. So you gotta be able to see every fish in your tank. And the guppies up high is your always gonna see. But let's keep looking around. Here I have my wall tank. Um, it's a little bit hard to see from behind, but I don't want to walk around because I have something special I want to show you guys. Uh, and these are those yellow half blacks. This is nothing brand new, but they are awesome. I've had this for maybe a year or two. And to be honest, I went through phases of using it and not using it. And I was like, I don't even know if I want it anymore. But then I came up with the idea, not the idea, but I always try to put pregnant females in here. And then they get stressed out, they never have babies. If they did have babies, then it just, overall I didn't like it. But it's because I was using it wrong. What it is, it blows uh, air up this tube, the water comes out, through the top from the pressure of the air. You put a little sponge here so the babies can't swim out. And there's a little lid with a feeding hole. And then I've had these guys breed in the mornings when I see the fry. And this group is very carnivorous. They always eat their babies. I never can, I never can find them. Even with the mops, the babies don't make it just with this group. I don't know what it is. But in order to make money off these fish and continue to breed them, I have other yellow half blacks that breed great and they don't eat their babies. But there might be one male or one female in here that just is the, I don't know what to say, but just the one that's doing all the damage. And you see that female, She's about to drop a ton of fry or something's going on. Because she's gotten huge and she's... I've been waiting for fry for a week. So hopefully she's had a bloat or anything. But let's get back to what I'm trying to show you. Is this hang on container. So I can go through, catch the fry. Drop them in here. Let them start to grow. And then I can put them in a tank to grow them out. Or I can put them back into this tank. Whenever they're of size. So that's a huge way to maximize your profit. Whenever you have fish breeding, you don't have space for all the babies to go to each and every tank. But you can do this easy. You can get a, a uh, air pump or already use one and split it off. Uh, get these containers for like 15 bucks maybe. Um, I'll try to find them online. I'll post the link below. Uh, I've been trying to add in my links below, my descriptions below, links to products I use. Uh, just kind of help you out. Find it. Find the best prices. Things like that. I think Amazon does a great job of that. But I bought this initially online. I think I got two of them. And then and I know they sell variety packs and things like that and they're pretty cool. But it's just doing a great job. So they had all their babies. I went through, caught them out. Now I know I can raise all these fries safely without changing their water parameters. So I'm not heating this because the tank is heated. I don't have to worry about them getting eaten. I don't have to worry about them sucked into a filter because I have this and water's flowing into it. That sponge will hold them back. Uh, I can feed baby brine shrimp and flake food. I know they're going to find it because it's not a far place to travel. So these hang on boxes I think are huge for breeding for profit where you can maximize each and every tank. Instead of setting up another tank over here, the tank cost me $20 at least for a dollar gallon. I got my lids on it which are cheap but they're another three or four bucks. Another $7 sponge filter, air tubing, check valve, larger water changes. I can do all of that can do, not all I can do, but I can do everything there, smaller scale on one of these for $7 maybe. So I'm buying that container once and I have maybe a dozen babies in there and that was a small, that was a small little uh, batch of babies. But say you have a guppy, have 30 fry and you catch them out put them in this box and say that they don't eat any of them versus you leave them in the tank and you get 10. You just save 20 babies, you sell us for a dollar a piece. You got $20 back and that just paid for itself. So it pays for itself in no time. And it's just cool, you can see the guppies up and close. They're not timid because there's nothing chasing them around. Um, I know there's a glare on this guy's hard, but these are great for catching fry and growing them out in long as you add your little sponge is what i'll sum it up in a thing i don't really like putting parents in here i've done it it can work i think it's too much work and it's too much of a risk because half the time you do it anyways they don't have fry and they may have had them in the tank if you just left them alone but for the fry i think it's awesome the mollies in here i'll definitely do that 
they're really hard for me to breed. I don't know why. Um, I know why, and people tell me all these different reasons, but I've been breeding fish for a long time. I've bred mollies before. I have so many hiding places in here, floating, bottom, middle, this and that. Anytime I separate a female for it to drop fry, I never have success. So I'm going back just to tons of coverage. I got a little grate here with holes in it. Any babies I ever find in here, I'm definitely catching them out and putting them on those hanger boxes and letting them grow. So that's a quick little molly tank. I'm trying to think if I got anything else to show you guys. I don't want to make the video too choppy, so I'll just keep filming while I walk around. Um, oh, I have one more thing I definitely want to show, and that is down here. I caught one of the purple delta females, introduced her here. And she had maybe 40 babies or so. She had a very large group of babies. And here you can see they're down there feeding on algae wafer, like I said. So people say they're top feeders, but they will definitely go down and feed off that food. And right now they can feed off that food until the night's over. So they're gonna feed on that for hours. As long as they're hungry and you can see these guys up here aren't eating it, that's because they're probably all full. They're growing. Um, they like small feedings frequently. So having food in there that's dense, like a wafer, they can t slowly pick at it, get small bites as they work on it, keeps them active, and doesn't get them bloated because you're not feeding a huge amount of flake food that sits on the bottom. They eat a whole bunch, then they're full, or they eat too much and they get uh, bloated. I think those wafers work great. And I can't see them in there, but I have some baby plecos. See, so there's a little pleco in there. Even when I'm not breeding them with guppies, I like to feed those wafers and I'll put a few grow routes in there. So I may go and just drop three baby plecos in there. You don't have to be breeding plecos to keep plecos and guppies together and still have a beneficial relationship. But drop a few in there, even especially if we're breeding for profit. Say you want to go buy a dozen plecos, so you can get them for five, ten bucks a piece, maybe cheaper depending where you're getting them. And you can put them in a tank help out your guppies breed faster. So boom, right there, it's helping you with breeding your guppies. And say six months from now, a year from now, you have adult breeder plecos. You can breed those plecos without spending 70 bucks on a adult at a store or buying a pair online for 50, 80 bucks. Not to promote myself too much, but I do have those on my website for $50 for a pair. Um, that's albinos and commons. But what I'm trying to get at is you grow those fish out for a large size, and you're like, I don't even want to breed the plecos. Go ahead and sell those adults that meanwhile have been eating food in your tank, helping your ple your guppies grow faster, and then you can sell them as a grow out. So sell those big plecos, make money off of that. You don't always have to breed fish for profit. Look for any ways you can make money in your tank. Put a fish in there that you know is a slow grower, but he's gonna grow meanwhile. And at the end of the day, when he's bigger, sell them buy a baby or trade them in for a few more babies, grow the babies out, sell those. So you don't have to always breed the fish to make money off of fish. And if your entire tank can be that way where everything has a purpose, um, it's just really good and it's more enjoyable for me too. I think it's rewarding to find ways that you can make stuff work. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. I know this is more so just me talking about my tanks and my guppies and plecos. Um, but it's just really beneficial to keep these guys together. I'm kind of just trying to show the success I'm having with it more so than this is why and this is why, because it just kind of works. The way you keep take care of them, um, just your natural care, it's gonna benefit each other. And this is that tank I told you I had those calico babies. So right there, one, two, these are calico long fins. And this one serves a long fin, but right in the middle of that pot, three. And hopefully there's some more in there. Oh, well, there's one. Behind the wafer, directly behind it. So I, I can see four right now. If you can see more, hopefully there are. But I can see one, two, three, four in this one shot. And I might even do this tonight. I'm gonna catch us, put them in a different tank. Oh, right there's a fifth. I'm gonna put them in a tank like I just showed with my guppies and they're gonna grow out so I can keep a closer eye on them and then potentially breed those or at least sell them de separately because I know they're gonna be a lot more rare of a fish and something I don't even have yet. 
um, harder to find available and especially at good quality and these guys are coming out amazing and they're all coming from commons and albinos and long fins because the long fins i have breeding their parents was a long fin albino and a super red female so they carry very good genetics and that's why i'm getting this so all my plecos even if they're commons and albinos that long fin albino there right in the middle to the left of the calico they all carry very good genetics i don't just breed commons and albinos even though i am i know their past and i know what they're capable of producing which is why i'm getting these calico long fins these spotted plecos because i'm breeding very recessive traits or i don't know if they're ne technically called recessive um but they're more rare traits and i'm combining them all together so they're kind of they're still your dominant traits that show up as your commons and your albinos but they carry a lot more so that gives you that 10 percent that 20 percent that 50 percent babies that are going to be something totally different you didn't expect so very cool fish it's really nice to find something different in the tank where you're always trying to make something really nice or produce something new but it doesn't always work whenever it does work it, it really pays off and no surprise i have some guppies breeding here um i have a few calls to make but it all started with a male in the back and this one female here my like i said my ye yellow half blacks kept eating their babies so i, I just decided let me split them up i'll put a pair here a pair there leave the rest of one tank anytime they have babies i'll catch them and put them in that hanging box and it's all starting to pay off because they got some fry in here and a lot of them they'll hide right in this moss and they'll pop out when i feed there goes one see one just came out right there see if i can catch one in the act watch them right in the middle right here guppy so they do go in there it's not too dense they absolutely will go sneak in and out of that moss um uh yarn i guess not really moss and there's a lot of food in there there's beneficial bacteria and kind of microorganisms that help feed these guys so i think i've ran it enough i think this video is getting long but hopefully you guys enjoyed looking at uh the guppies and plecos here's a sale tank that i have and on, on accident, but I take good care of these guppies and I'm feeding a large bristlenose pleco in here. Look what happened. I got some babies. So I just put a male and female in here to kind of help clean up the extra food for the guppies. Cause when I had this many guppies in the tank and I just sold, I think 80 out of here to a store. So I had a few hundred large adult guppies. They were eating the flake food too quick. I want something to chow on all day. So I gave them algae wafers, anything that was left over, because uh, I needed to feed them a certain amount and not have leftover. I had some larger plecos, and then they helped clean it up so the tank stays nice and clear, and at the same time they end up breeding. So very beneficial relationship, and all these guppies are looking real good. Uh, some of these are kind of assorted. They come from all my strains, but I end up mixing them, because um, these will go to pet stores where they're selling them in a tank together. So it helps me condense my tanks, sell some bulk, but I also sell those uh, trios and things like that on my website where it's more specific. But as I was trying to say, thanks for watching guys. Uh, stay tuned for more videos. You're gonna see a lot more of uh, baby guppies, adults, and a lot more Pleco projects in the future. Um, Hope you guys enjoy these types of fish. I know guppies are one of my favorites and over time plecos have become too. Especially the bristlenose pleco, the ancestrous pleco they're called. Uh, hopefully this helps you guys house them together. And if it kind of struck your interest in them and said, I like those, I think they look cool. There's some options. Say you want to try to create something new, you want to do a project and this is inspiring you. That's my goal. So. Thanks again, guys. I know this was a long video and I know I got off topic, but if you guys enjoy fish tanks and you're, you're looking at stuff like this, um, I think I probably kept your interest, but I know I watch stuff like this and I always enjoy it. So thanks for watching. Please comment, tell me if you like this video and what you think I could have added. Uh, Cause I'm positive that I forgot things and things I probably wanted to say I forgot to. 
So that's why I've been doing these videos and I've been doing more of them so I can keep filling in those gaps. So once and finally again, thank you for watching and stay tuned.